I feel so silly wearing makeup for a video like this, but I told myself I'm not going to get emotional, so whatever. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little bit different to what you normally see from me. I have been battling for a really long time trying to figure out whether this is a video that I really wanted to do for a few reasons. Firstly, I didn't know if I could do it justice. Secondly, I really want to be known for the things that I'm good at and the positive personality traits that I have and not known for what I suffer from. I have felt that way throughout my entire career, so I guess it's never really been something that I have ever discussed, particularly on a platform like this where anyone can see it. This is always something that I've kept really private, even though I would tell close friends and of course if anyone brought it up with me I would relate to them with my stories, but it's just never something that I have purposefully put out into the universe, I guess. And I actually don't even know where to start. So really recently, as in like within the last week, it became really clear to me how important it is to sometimes just say something. So someone that I'm really friendly with, I wouldn't say that we're close friends. I don't really know that much about her and I haven't really known her for that long and haven't really had the chance to spend a lot of time with her. But I definitely admire her and if she wants to put her hand up and say it's me, then... Um, please feel free to, but for now I'll keep her name private. She had made a video and in that video she happened to mention that she was really struggling and she didn't want to leave the house and basically mentally she was not in a good place and it was really affecting her. And I didn't know that that video had been filmed three weeks before I had seen it. So I messaged her and I can't remember exactly what I said, but I remember at the time thinking like, is this weird that I'm just messaging her out of the blue about this, which is something quite heavy. Um, and th even the words in the text that I was sending were quite heavy because I just wanted to check on her, to share a story with her. So I was kind of really doubting whether I should do it. And I was just like, screw it. And I just pressed send. And she ended up writing back and I, her replies were quite short, but very friendly, just like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Things like that. But then I saw her the other day and I hadn't seen her since that happened. In fact, I hadn't seen her for quite a while. And she came up to me and she pulled me aside. <sighs> Damn it, I need tissue. Okay, I'm just going to say this bit quickly. She pulled me aside and she said, thank you so much. She was like, you have no idea how much that meant to me. She said basically that at that time just happened to be the day she uploaded this video, that she'd hit rock bottom, that things really weren't good. She really appreciated me reaching out and that I was the last person she ever would have expected to reach out and say what I said. So I guess the whole point of this video is to share with you my story. Hopefully I won't get emotional for my part because I can usually speak about this in a very matter of fact kind of way. So the whole reason I'm filming this is in the hope that if even one of you is suffering in the same way that I have or this person has, that it helps you, that it makes you feel like you're not alone. I want you to know that I'm always here for you guys. I know that so far I've just been doing makeup and tutorials, but on Snapchat in particular, I feel like I get to talk to you a lot more and in a lot more depth and a lot more personally. And people have reached out to me about this before. So I just want you to know that even though I don't know you personally, I love you guys and I'm definitely here for you for whatever I can offer to help if you need it. Or if you aren't in this position and you aren't suffering from this, then I'm hoping that if you know someone that is, that you can reach out to them, that you can just check on them, make sure they're okay. You can even show them this video if you want to so that they know that they're not alone in it either. So that's the whole point of this video. Any negativity about this subject is not welcome. Don't even bother with it. I'm doing this in the hope that it reaches someone, that it maybe helps. I actually kind of don't even know where to start with this. I feel like starting from the beginning, this could be a long video. So maybe grab some snacks. 
So when I was eight years old, I started suffering from panic attacks after um, a traumatic event, I guess you would say. It was traumatic for me at the time because I was a child, but also it appeared to be traumatic for the adult that was involved as well. So I started suffering from panic attacks and I don't really have the best memory of how exactly it started happening or the exact timeline, I guess. Um, but I remember the panic attacks very, very vividly. I wouldn't let my mum out of my sight. I didn't want her going to work. I didn't want her seeing her friends. I was like super glued to her. I just did not want her leaving my sight at all. I was terrified of storms, but not even just storms, but like a cloud in the sky would completely terrify me. My panic attacks were so severe, my body would be vibrating. I remember feeling so hot and I don't know if I was sweating, but it certainly felt like I was sweating. It felt feverish and I would just be violently shaking. And I don't know if I would scream out loud, but definitely on the inside, I was screaming. I also suffered from severe chest pains and my mum recently told me that she actually had to rush me to emergency one night because they thought, I don't know if you can have a heart attack at the age of eight, but they thought something pretty severe was happening and I ended up getting all the tests and my physical body was fine, but obviously in the head, I wasn't. I'm not sure what happened from then and how this transitioned, but I eventually got depression from the anxiety. And um, I stopped wanting to leave the house. Not only could my mum not leave the house, but I didn't want to leave the house. School holidays, I didn't want to do anything. And I just really retreated into a dark place in my mind. So my parents sent me to see a counsellor, um, a children's counsellor, and I was diagnosed with depression. It's really weird because it's only been in very recent times that I have acknowledged or even known that what I was suffering from back then was actually anxiety. I don't know if this had been discussed with my with my mum, as in, I don't know if doctors had told my mum, this is anxiety that's then led to depression, but anxiety had not even been mentioned to me at this point at all. Although now looking back on it, I can very clearly see that that was panic attacks and a lot of them. So I would see this counsellor and I think we definitely made some improvements but I was pretty severely depressed and uh, I definitely did not care about my life. So I was seeing this counsellor, I was diagnosed with depression. They didn't want to put me on medication because of my age. I'm not sure if I ever fully recovered from that phase when I went to high school. I mean, I don't know if phase is the right word, but you know what I mean? I'm not sure if I was fully recovered when I went to high school, but I ended up seeing another counselor when I was in high school and the topic of bullying was brought up because I clearly did not want to be at school and I was depressed again. And I said, there was no bullying. I definitely hadn't been bullied. And I would still have said that all the way up until about a month ago. About a month ago, I had been kind of forced to uh, kind of relive some childhood experiences to help me push through some mental boundaries that I've been facing. And I had told a story about how there was a, um, an individual who I went to school with who used to actually probably beat me up is the right word to say. He would be quite violent towards me. Um, he would pinch me, he would punch me, he would kick me. I can't remember now if he was verbally abusive as well, but physically he treated me like a little boy brother. You know how boys will fight each other, they'll pick on each other. He treated me like that, except I wasn't a boy, I wasn't his brother and it just wasn't okay. But for some reason, I had never recognized this as bullying. In fact, I hardly even had it in my memory until it was brought up about a month ago. So this kid used to bully me every single day for about the three years that I went to that particular high school. I'm really not sure why I never mentioned it to anyone. All I would ever say was that I hated him. 
And I'm not really the kind of person that says that a lot, but I can tell you that I did not want anything to do with this kid, but I was forced to see him every day. Even now talking about it, I still, I feel like I wasn't bullied, but then thinking about the actions, if that was happening to anyone else that I knew, if I knew a kid that was in high school now and that was happening to, for sure I would consider that bullying. But for some reason, I've been told that I'm probably blocking it out. But anyway, I ended up convincing my parents after three years to let me change schools. So I did for my last year of high school. And I think I was really happy there. I mean, happy for me going to school. I was not the kind of kid that wanted to be at school. But for me, I was happy to be at that school and not at the school I was previously at. So then my mental health got a lot better. I don't remember being depressed during that time. I did get pretty severe migraines though and I would still suffer from chest pains, but I don't remember feeling anxious. I did get a bit stressed around exam times, but other than that, I don't remember feeling daily anxiety or anything like that. So then from that point until I was 21, I had a pretty good run. Work was going really well for me. Obviously I was becoming a makeup artist and um, I had my boyfriend who I was really happy with and Things were just good. Then for my 21st birthday, I decided to not have a party and instead I went to Hawaii with my parents and my boyfriend and had the most amazing two weeks there. And then on the way home, I suffered from what I'm assuming is a panic attack. So for about three or four hours out of the 10 hour flight, I couldn't breathe. And it was just... Horrendous. It was really stressful. I was lucky that the flight was a little bit quiet so that I could um, move to a seat where there was more space around me. But that was super traumatic because when you suffer from anxiety, all you want to do is get the fuck out of wherever you are. And on a 10 hour flight home, you've got no choice. So obviously, I was super relieved when I got home. But then I started getting anxious slowly but really regularly. I remember one day I was doing a shoot um, for a magazine and I had been so hungry and I was like, yes, can't wait for lunchtime because we'd always go out as a team to go and get lunch together. And then we went to this restaurant for lunch and as soon as I sat down, I became anxious. And again, couldn't breathe. The chest pain started. If you've ever suffered from a panic attack, you will know that it feels basically just like a heart attack. You literally start to freak out that you are having a heart attack. Your chest is completely tight. It's just, it's an overwhelming feeling. So I was at this restaurant and I couldn't eat. And so everyone was like, what's wrong? Are you okay? Why aren't you hungry? And so when people are kind of questioning you like that, for me personally, that makes me even more stressed. So when everyone was grilling me, like, why aren't you hungry? Are you going to eat? I just freaked out. And I I think I just got up and left the restaurant and just said I had to go take a phone call. I hide my feelings like crazy. None of my friends ever knew at the time that I was experiencing depression or anxiety throughout any of my years of it. None of my friends knew, not even my closest friends. The only people that knew would have been my parents and maybe anyone that they happened to share it with because they were organizing to fix it or to try and fix it. So I was starting to get panic attacks in random situations, situations that I was very used to being in. And it ended up resulting in anxiety every single day. Every single day I would wake up with a tight feeling in my chest. Every single day I would question whether I even wanted to leave the house. Every single day if I did leave the house, I would always find the exits in the building I was in so that I could leave. I basically just stopped living my normal life. Some days, instead of having a panic attack, I would just cry. And that was my way of having a panic attack and just getting it all out. It caused pretty severe issues in my relationship with my boyfriend because he didn't know what was going on and I didn't really know how to explain it to him. If I was about to have a panic attack, I would never say like, hey babe, I'm feeling anxious, probably gonna have a panic attack. I would just freak out. One day we were about to go down to a cafe and... Um, we got in the car to go and I just suddenly burst into tears and got out of the car, ran back inside and closed the door and didn't want anyone to talk to me. So I was exhibiting some pretty weird behavior. So obviously the fact that I wasn't 
openly discussing with him what was going on, uh, it would have just seemed really odd. And I think he may have even taken it personally a little bit. I also didn't really see my friends as much because I didn't want to go out. I definitely didn't want to go anywhere busy. I didn't want to get in lifts. I definitely didn't want to fly anywhere. It actually, it prevented me from doing a lot of the things that I would normally do. It was something that I woke up with, dealt with all day, went to sleep with, dreamt about, woke up with again the next day. So again, I started to get to a really low point in my life and I had had pretty bad thoughts when I was depressed. I didn't want to live my life. I didn't consider my life of any value to myself or to anyone else. But then when I was suffering daily from anxiety, I literally could not see how to continue living my life the way it was. It's truly horrific. Anxiety consumes you. It literally feels like the whole room you're in is just closing in around you. It's painful. It's uncomfortable. It's just a really awful thing to go through. And the fact that it was stopping me from living my life and I had worked so hard to get through the depression and all of that, I had worked so hard to get through it and I felt like I was getting to a better place. So then to be hit with something like this, I just didn't want to be alive anymore. I didn't want to do it anymore. I was definitely on the last straw. So I had started seeing yet another psychologist and I had learnt how the brain works, how anxiety comes up and uh, eventually I learned how to stop myself from having a panic attack using breathing techniques. I also had it confirmed that I was not suffering from a heart attack because that when you feel anxious, you start to then feel the, the same kind of feelings as a heart attack. And then you actually worry, am I having a heart attack? So I had it confirmed that in fact, I was not having a heart attack. So it was one less thing to worry about was my actual physical health. So I learned how to not have panic attacks, but I was still suffering from the anxiety every single day. I could still feel it in my body. I could feel that it was waiting to come up. It's just that if it did come up, I could bring it back down to just that feeling in my chest, in the pit of my stomach. I could bring it back to that. So it was still really unpleasant and I still didn't want to go places. I still was not living my normal life and I still needed more help. The anxiety also really displayed itself as a fear of flying, which I think would be from what did happen when I was coming home from Hawaii that time. But it pretty severely played out in a fear of flying. So I turned down every job that involved a plane, whether it was flying to Melbourne, which is an hour and a half from where I live via plane or international. I turned down everything I did not want to do it, which, um, you know, it, it would have affected my career a little bit, but I just could not, my head could not get to that point where I would get on a plane. So I'd been doing research on things that I could do to fix it. And I, there was just nothing that I hadn't tried basically. And then one day, this will sound so silly, but I was watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and one of the women, Kyle, I think her name is, was getting on a plane, a private plane, of course, because they have a lot of money. And I'm pretty sure it was her and she was terrified of flying. So she employed a hypnotherapist to help with her fear of flying. It was like a light bulb moment for me because I was like, why don't I try hypnotherapy? Before that, I had been asked to do my friend's wedding makeup in Bali and I had said yes, but the moment I said yes, I regretted it because I was like, great, now I have to actually get on a plane. So I was basically trying to plan my way out of going to Bali. I was trying to think of any excuse to get out of it. And my friend was like, hey, let me know when you want me to book tickets. Let me know when you want to book accommodation. And I was just like, no, I was not wanting to go at all. And I was just really trying to find an a way to let her down easily. This was still probably nine months before the wedding. So it wasn't like a week beforehand, but basically I was really 
really trying to get out of it. So when I saw this about the hypnotherapy, I thought, screw it, I'm going to try it. I don't necessarily believe or not believe in these things, but I was at a point where, because I was still suffering from anxiety every day, I was still questioning whether I wanted to even live this life. So I just thought, why not try it? I've got nothing to lose. It's worth a shot. So I met up with this woman and she was totally confident that she could cure me of any um, anxious feelings that I was having. So she recommended me about five sessions and I agreed to do all of them, obviously. And she gave me a CD to listen to every single night for as long as I was doing the sessions with her. Hypnotherapy is not what you would expect from seeing a hypnotist on TV. It's not like what, I mean, from what I've experienced, it's not like, and you're better. Um, it was the closest thing I could describe it as would be a guided meditation. So I would sit on this uh, chair, a really comfy chair. I would have cushions all around me. I would actually tuck myself up with a blanket so I would get quite cozy in there. And then she would talk to me with my eyes closed. So I did all five sessions and I didn't notice any difference until the fourth one. And on the fourth one, it was like something inside me changed. I walked out of there and I felt a complete release. And it was the first time in such a long time I had felt no anxiety whatsoever. No tightness in my chest, no fear around what I was doing or where I was going, just freedom. This was the first time that I felt complete release and I could feel it in my body, in my mind. It was so amazing and I ended up getting on that plane going to Bali and I had a great time and I flew home and I was totally okay doing that too. I'm definitely not perfect now. I still have some issues that I'm working through. However, I do not feel anxious every single day. I do not worry about where I'm going. I don't look for every exit in the building. I do get in lifts and I do live a pretty normal and pretty happy life. If you're at that point where you are desperate and you will do anything to feel that, that release and to not feel anxious anymore, I would definitely recommend giving hypnotherapy a try. I would say that it's completely changed my life the way that none of my six counsellors or psychologists could. I've never had such positive results from something and even if it feels like something you wouldn't be interested in or that wouldn't work for you, definitely give it a try. I'm not going to recommend a particular person to you for this because I feel like it's a really personal choice. You really want to find someone that you connect with and that you feel is saying things that really resonate with you. I would definitely say that hypnotherapy has completely changed my life. I would recommend it to anyone that has felt the way that I have felt. So that's what I recommended to that friend of mine when I messaged her. I said that I was at a point in my life where I didn't want to live this life anymore and that hypnotherapy changed my world for me. You definitely need an open mind and I think feeling a little bit desperate to fix things actually really helps as well. Don't question the process too much. Just openly go with it, accept what's happening and I really think that it could benefit you. Obviously, I am no doctor or psychologist or hypnotherapist or anyone with any kind of degree in that area, but I wanted to share that with you just in case you felt like you were at that point where you had tried everything, but maybe hadn't tried this. So again, if you're watching this and you've suffered from depression or anxiety or actually anything, you're not alone. I'm always here for you. I really love you guys and I appreciate all the support you give me and I really hope that you feel when you reach out to me that I'm giving you that support back as well. And if you're not currently suffering or if you haven't suffered from this, just be really gentle on the people around you that might be because it's actually so much harder to go through than what you might ever think. So check on the people you love, make sure they're okay. 
send them the link to this video if you think it will help them and just make it known that you're there for them. When I sent that text message, I never thought that it would reach her the way it did. And I definitely never thought that two weeks later I would be sitting with this person with tears in her eyes telling me that it really made a difference. So that little text message that felt silly to me changed her day and will hopefully start the process to change her life. That might sound silly, but hopefully you get it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was very different to what I normally do. So I hope it was worth it. It's kind of weird that I just filmed this after thinking about it for so long. It feels kind of odd to me, but I'm glad I've done it. I hope it helps at least just one of you. And I will see you guys in another video very soon where it will be back to makeup talk and back to happy smiley me. <laughs> Bye.